Well, hello everyone. This is a special video that I am including in a series of mine, a playlist on YouTube titled Living the Astrology, where I talk about living through transits, very significant transits. At this point, I'm only doing, you know, transits that last over a year. And in this case, I'm going to talk about just finishing up a 10 year transit of Chiron in the 11th house as it went through Pisces and now it is in Aries and I'm coming into my Chiron return. Fun times, yes. <laughs> and so, yeah, this uh, transit, it started January 11th, 2014 for me and ended recently March 3rd of 2024, this year. As I'm, I'm filming this. So I, I'm glad to be done with this transit. We have a lot to talk about as I share with you what this transit was like and how it started what it was like you know in the middle of it because it kind of took on different flavors a bit as i went through you know different saturn transits i found were very significantly impacting the chiron right so i'll talk about that and then the way this finished up with me coming into a chiral return again uh, you know there's a lot of nuance going on as other energies are shifting and changing during this 10-year transit that i think have to be taken into consideration uh, but all in all i think that the main theme of this was about me having to heal wounds having to do with my relationships to other people, whether it is friend groups, my social life, colleagues, or soulmates. Couple side notes. Um, number one, I am not going to be a doing a series of all the Chiron transits through all the signs and all the houses because that's already been done by a lot of other people. And I'm trying to do something different, which requires a lot more vulnerability. Therefore, it's pretty rare, which is to actually talk about what it's like to live through this astrology. I'm not, therefore, going to be able to give you that for all of the other signs and houses. But you can find those textbook definitions almost anywhere. Also, a couple disclaimers. I have a Pisces stellium, Pisces moon, Pisces Venus in the 11th house. So, and during this time frame that I'm talking about, this 10-year time frame, Neptune was also in that 11th house. So, unfortunately, um, I had a lot of blind spots. I had a lot, a lot of wishful thinking, high ideals, high hopes. And, yeah, with my Pisces stellium, I, I probably maybe took it a little bit harder than possibly some other people who don't have so much water in their chart, you know, I, it, it was hard for me to walk it off. So for some of you, I might sound like I'm whining or like I'm being a little over the top, <laughs> but that's my energetic signature. So <laughs> deal with it, I guess. I'm going to keep it real. So let's just cover some brief information here. Chiron is the wounded healer and indicates something that you likely have to heal within yourself. And when you do so, the higher purpose is for you to bring healing to others. And when we're talking about 11th house, all things Aquarian, which side note, I am an Aquarian. So this really affected me, you know, um, it could have to do with friend groups, social groups, social media. It could have to do with soulmates, your ideals, your way of getting wish fulfillment of those ideals. Um, it could have to do with workplace colleagues. So we're going to hit on a lot of those topics as I get into these years of, of how it kind of morphed and it took on different expressions or manifestations during this 10-year time. Okay, so when this transit started in 2014, I was coming out of a, a Saturn transit in my sixth house. It was moving into my seventh, so... Um, yeah, already, you know, I've got houses that are triggering this issue of who I'm working with and who I'm partnered with. And yes, I start coming into a time in my life where I'm getting a divorce. Okay. Because of that Saturn and seventh house transit, it's really 
taking me to task in terms of who I have life partnered with and it's just not holding up under the testing. So, you know, automatically I'd say within the first two years of this trans uh, transit because of where Saturn was, I'm having to look at a sober reality of who I've idealized in terms of life partnering. Um, that's not really holding any water and I start suddenly seeing things uh, out of this person like for example, 20 year marriage, three kids, been to hell and back, and it's just been financial problem after financial problem. And he finally comes into money. <laughs> and oh my God, you know, the whole time I've been hearing for 20 years, you know, like all these problems are because of money, but then he then money's not a problem anymore. And it actually magnified the problems. And I'm like, oh my God, who is this person? Who is this monster? Who did I marry? Like, how did I not see this before? How did I not see this? You know, it's so I had to do like a lot of soul searching, like, and you know, just for those of you wondering, I'll tell you, and I and I I've shared it with people on my channel. How did I not see it? Because I didn't want to, right? I'm an empath. I knew at some level, but I either didn't want to believe it. Or I wanted to make believe that this was a solvable problem. Um, not really understanding that this is who this person is and this is who they choose to be. I mean, regardless of what they say, what they do. And, and suddenly, like, the 20 years was, like, in my face of, you know what? There's no amount of money that's going to fix this problem because this is not a problem for this person. This is who they are. And the money is just a magnifier of it. And so... Uh, yeah, wow, that was like a very sober reality check. And I, side note, I'm bringing up the Saturn transits because I personally feel that that is affecting how this Chiron is, it's very key in understanding how Chiron is impacting because, right, Saturn is where the squeeze is being put on your life. It is a pain point. It's an area of limitation. It's an area of karma, of heaviness, of burden. So if you look at wherever Saturn is transiting during this Chiron transit, which, you know, this is slow moving. This is, these, these Chiron transits go through houses so slowly, like, uh, you know, we're talking about 10 year transits roughly. And maybe making it through two, two signs during that time. So Saturn comparatively is moving through signs every and houses roughly every two and a half years. So they're both slow transits, but Chiron moves slower, allowing for more Saturn transits during that time frame. So anyway, I really feel the Saturn transit colors where that squeeze, where that pain point is coming up and where Chiron is coming in saying, yeah, we got to heal this pain in your life this wound and uh back to chiron in 11 it's like well what did you idealize with this soulmate with this partner and what is the truth of this like you really you really banked a lot on this person you gave this person 20 years of your life you have three kids with them and this is who they are so obviously at around the same time i am uh needing to get out of this marriage and looking around at you know my support system friends and whatnot like who do i have to rely upon as i'm going through this major shift in my life and a lot of my friends up until this point were in the church and a uh, long story short i come to realize that um, they you know they're kind of i'm gonna pray for you sister so and so but they're um they're not really gonna open their doors up or their pocketbooks up or anything like that. And so I start seeing the limitation of these friendships, which I somewhat understand, uh, but then, you know, because of what I'm going through, a lot of my beliefs are getting challenged and even on a spiritual level, which side note, um, 11th house has a lot to do with astrology. So I really started getting even deeper into astrology. And I think it was about 2014 when I had my first astrology reading from a, a Christian woman and she was talking to me about these issues going on in my marriage and trouble finding work and all of that 
because of the Saturn transit, sixth and seventh house were getting hit, you know, in prior years. And so um, my belief system about astrology starts changing. And of course, you know, a lot of people in the church thinks that's witchcraft. And I know all the teachings by it, behind it. And so I just, I try to start talking to some of them and say, you know, astrology is what led the wise men, the, the magi, magicians, astrologers, to Christ, you know, and uh, that was just kind of a deer in a headlight went nowhere. And then I just kind of started recoiling and feeling like, you know, I don't want to get into an argument where they feel like I'm trying to convert them to my way of thinking because I'm really not. And I don't want to feel like I have to defend my beliefs because I just don't even want to, like, I've got my own battle. So I just started pulling back further. And I started realizing that actually these people who I was calling my friends were really there because we shared beliefs, but the moment that those beliefs were no longer shared, we really no longer had a friendship. These were not people that I could actually call at 3 a.m. I mean, I know, I know those are few and far between in this life, period, generally. But I began to recognize this was the case with these people that I really thought I had some closeness to. I started noticing little nuances like that they I'd invite them to places or I'd invite them to come over and they just wouldn't come over. They wouldn't show up. Now, I was always free to come to them, but they would never come to me. And I started, particularly among my female friends, started noticing this pattern of, okay, so why can I come to you, but you can't come to me? What is that about? And that's when I started realizing these are not really my friends, friends. So yeah, then I think toward the end of 2014, I started just having a fallout with a friend of mine who I'd been close to for about 20 years, actually several friends who I had a lot of longevity with these people, like um, one friend five years, another one 10 years, another one 20 years. And I just started having fallouts with these people because I was going through a time of crisis in my life and I needed some help and they just were not showing up even for the most simple things like I know like the, the one that I was friends with for five years, I called her up and I said, hey, there's been a death in the family and I don't have anybody to let my dog out during the day while I'm at work because my kids won't be here. Nobody's going to be here at the house to let him out. And she was like 15 minutes away and she just gave me a very flat, unsympathetic, cold, non-explanatory no. And... I was like, what is this? And I started searching myself and saying, have I been this way? Like, was this a kind of person I know? And I started thinking, no, I did this for them. I did that. But then I started thinking, well, did I do it to get something as a conditional giving? No. Well, am I expecting too much too soon? No, I actually been doing this for like five years. And then I started thinking, wait a minute. Oh, well, this person has never come to me like every time we get together it's they're inviting me to meet them up at their house or wherever they want to eat whatever they want to do but they've never once in five years come to me and the moment I ask them hey could you just come to my house and let my dog out during the day because we had a funeral we had a death in the family like that's all I'm asking like you're just not even going to say you're sorry you're not going to explain so I had situations like that go on where this light bulb went into my head like oh my god and I started looking at myself like okay so I'm not expecting too much out of these people. I'm not using them. I'm not having a transactional relationship. Wait a minute. This has been a really kind of a one-sided relationship for a long time. How am I getting into this? And I just start pulling back and saying, you know what? I got to do friendship differently because this is not friendship. This is not, this is, this needs to be reciprocated. And I started actually noticing within myself that I was attracting these people into my life because I would, they always had some story uh about i don't know why they're a recluse why they're a hermit um why uh, you know i'm rescuing a bunch of animals so i have to get back home and i can't come to your graduation and always something or i i i'm afraid to drive at night i get i get anxiety when i drive or i have all kinds of excuses oh because i never had children i just don't feel comfortable being around other people with children it triggers me like all of their issues and stories equate to me getting these friends who never show up for me in any meaningful way really and i realized like 
I've maybe been sympathizing with them more than they sympathize with me. And this is, this is not a friendship. This is not healthy. And so I start cutting, I start doing my queen of swords stuff and cutting these people out. Oh, the friendship that ended after 20 years, I started seeing things out of this person. It was like a slow digression going on towards mental illness. And I kept trying to talk to that person about it. And they weren't listening to me. Also, like, to the last 10 years of the 20-year friendship, I was, like, trying to help and warn. And I just came to the conclusion, like, this person doesn't listen to me. They don't value my opinion. I, even when my warnings came to pass, it was like, well, yeah, that happened. I told you not about that 10 years ago, and you're still doing it, you know? Um, I just started realizing that they don't listen to me. They don't value my opinion. And so I started asking myself, like, why is this person even talking to me? Like, why are we even friends? And I start realizing that their reason for being friends with me is that they just want somebody to feel sorry for them and commiserate. And I'm apparently really fantastic at it. But at the end of the day, you know, they're not going to change. Like, I'm just me being a friend with them is going to be about me sitting by watching them self-destruct and nothing I say or do can stop them. And that's when I decided like, I've got to get out of this. And no, friendship is not about in order for us to be friends, you've got to do everything I say. No, it's just like I, if you are involved in some kind of self-destructive behavior to yourself and or your family members, please don't do this for like, I was witnessing this for 10 years and nothing I said or did could stop this person. And I just, I just finally realized like, I don't want to continue being involved in this and subjected to this. And obviously this person's reason for being a friend with me is, has nothing to do with valuing my opinion or my input as a friend, as right as I may be, as time has proven me to be, it just doesn't change. And I end up very much alone. And that's when we get into a time frame where Saturn moves into my eighth house, which is holy crap, very dark place. So from 2016 to 2018, uh, Saturn is moving from the seventh to the eighth house where I'm basically going through this kind of midlife crisis energy. Also, the eclipses at this point are now on my sign and my opposite sign of Leo. So there's a lot of shedding going on. It was very cathartic. It's what led to me doing this channel, by the way. But I was working at a social media company, which if I mentioned it, you would know. Everybody knows what this company is. And they hired me and I ended up working there for about a year and a half. And during this time, I was also like, and even leading up to this time, I was very, very active on this platform, which I am no longer on this platform at all because I worked for them. Again, 11th house, we're talking about social media. I end up working for the social media company and I, and I go into this company and I start finding out what really goes on at these companies behind closed doors that if most people knew about, they would not be on these platforms, okay? And so that's a whole nother subject for another time. But anyway, I, I, these people become aware of my, the people higher up become aware of my uh, political activism that I was doing at that time. And I think they realized that that was a high risk for them. And they wanted me out because I don't align with their politics. Uh, a lot of these social media organizations are very left leaning. And as many of you know, I'm a conservative. <laughs> All right. Okay, I am very liberty-leaning, pro-freedom, okay? So, uh, but I got along with everybody because I'm, I'm an Aquarian. I, I can do that. I get along with all kinds of people, all walks of life. We don't have to agree to get along, okay? Um, and I think that was actually more threatening to them because they saw that I had the ability to get into leadership there, and I just don't think they wanted that. So I started getting blocked with promotions, and then they started trying to get rid of me by saying at one point you're working too fast, even though I had like a high accuracy rate. And then, so I slowed it down and then they say you're going too slow. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm not a robot, right? 
my accuracy rate is, you know, um, like 99%. And so they just kept trying to find a way to get rid of me and they ultimately did. And so I lost my job. I lost my home and, and right, that was during eclipse season and my sign and it was absolutely devastating. And if anybody actually knew the details of everything that went down with me losing that job, um, it was just like, they, they couldn't even believe like, how is this even legal? How is this happening? Well, it's Texas, you know, we, it's an at will state. They can fire you for any reason, any time. And they got away with it. So they don't want you. They don't want you. Right. That's, I could say so much about these social media platforms and who they boost and who they de-boost or bury in the algorithms. But I digress. My point is that during this time of Chiron in the 11th house, that I suffered these losses because of the Saturn transits, the Saturn transit and the eclipse season, which again, I'm not saying this is all going to happen to you, but uh, the Chiron in the 11th house there brought up this woundedness of me working at the social media company and then losing that job, losing my home as a result. And I noticed how powerless people were uh, that uh, particularly on my jobs, they were just silent because they don't want to get axed next either. And I had witnessed this with other people before also at that company. So, you know, if somebody was openly being abused or whatever and got fired unjustly, everybody would just be quiet, not say anything because they didn't want to get axed next. And so I, I kind of watched how people just go along with abuse because they're afraid of being abused. And, and then I noticed like, one of my friends tried to raise money for me uh, to help me with a move or help me with my rent or something. And most people on social media just kept scrolling and they ignore, nobody gave anything to it. And so I had a sober reality check during that time that these friends <laughs> are not really my friends. Like these are, these are people who basically, if they, if they saw me under a bridge with my children, they wouldn't even throw me a penny. So why was I giving them all my time and attention? And that was a huge wake up call about how I was spending my time and my energy on these social media platforms. And that's when I came to the idea that I do not want to be putting my energy on these platforms so they can profit from it, but so that I can profit from it. And that side note led to me launching this channel where I'm like, okay, I'm going to use, I'm going to use social media to profit me rather than these other people. That's, you know, when I launched, launched this channel and side note, I did end up making a livable income for probably a two and a half years of me doing this channel. That is no longer, we'll talk about that <laughs> if you make it to the end of this video. Oh, but I gotta say, I think that it was hard for me to see the truth of the matter. You know, like when I saw how many people didn't give to me and my children, how many people ignored or kept scrolling or looked the other way when I went through this crisis, this major crisis that was unfair, unjust. Because at that time also, not only was I a single mom that just lost her job and was about to lose her home, I also had not been getting child support. So when I saw how many people just looked the other way and how cold this world was, I started asking myself, wait a minute, I thought, you know, I thought we were friends. Like we had a bunch of conversations. Like we, I thought I really connected with these people, but they won't even throw me a dollar. Like what, what is that about? And that's when a light bulb went off in my head and I started realizing, oh, this was never really about me. They, they don't care about me. <laughs> like these people are just bored. They're lonely. They get off of work. They want somebody to talk to and they want to have a low or no maintenance relationship. And that's what these artificial friends are affording them. It's, they've got no skin in the game. So it really changed the way I looked at my online social media. Okay, so by 2018, 2019, when Chiron moves into Aries and it's still in my 11th house, I begin really pulling back at this time. I've obviously, as I ex explained previously, done a lot of shedding of my offline and online friend groups. And I'm going through Saturn in the eighth house solidly at this time. I've, I'm post-divorce and 
I am just very much guarding my own energy. I'm kind of living like a recluse, you know, where I had my business uh, that I was doing during the day and a little job in the middle of the night. And then toward the end of that transit, I got rid of that job. Because side note, those people, uh, even though I never brought up politics or my spiritual work, they started digging and looking me up online. And that's when they figured out what I was doing and that they didn't like it. They don't agree with my beliefs. <laughs> so they started um, making things difficult on me. I had a supervisor who just started getting very persnickety and nitpicky and saying, don't do this, do it like that. And I knew that there were no policies against it because I, I had worked in another location and was friends with that supervisor. And I knew he was just making up rules to make the job hard on me. And then I finally had somebody that worked there that came forth and said, yeah, they found your social media and they don't like you and they're trying to get rid of you. And so I just finally left because I knew again in Texas, I'm like, all right, these people don't like me. Um, they can just get rid of you, you know, and, and I don't want to be fired. I don't want it on my record. So I'm going to leave on my terms. I'm going to get out. And that's when I went really, you know, fully into my business. And I was working like, I don't know, 60 hours a week alone with my online business which for a while, like I said, was paying a livable income, but I was, I was constantly working and I was a recluse and probably, you know, Saturn going through that eighth house really kept me there in that moment. I did meet some people who came around uh, because I was like, because of my kids or because of, um, I was in a house sharing situation at that time, which I will probably talk more about I'll talk more about in my uh, Saturn through the 10th house transit video, which I'll hopefully put out in the next couple weeks. But um, basically house sharing situations to shoulder the financial strain I was under with Saturn at that time going through my eighth house. And unfortunately, I again was getting kind of a bitter taste in my mouth about people where I was like, um, trying to be generous and giving at this point I'm a lot more self-aware and I'm observant of other people and where they're coming from and their reasons their motivations for getting involved with me and I start you know at this point learning to uh, match effort and I you know because I'm a, I'm a really generous person with my Pisces and Aquarius placements uh, which is my gift curse you know but I would be generous and then I would notice that I was not getting back in return again and I was observing, you know, mentalities of, from people of, well, I can't give. Um, and I thought, well, shit, I mean, why do you think I can? Do you, right? Like, why do you think that I'm in a better situation to give? Than, I could sit back and say, I can't. I can't give because I'm a single mom. I can't give because I'm not getting child support. I can't give because look at where I'm living. I'm house sharing with people so that my children can be in a decent home in a decent neighborhood. You know, not living in a project somewhere. But no. I don't say that. I say, what can I give? And people say, well, I can't give anything. And I'm like, holy crap, because they've got a laundry list of excuses. And that's not my mentality. Uh, I get into this, this exploitation. So that's when I really start, okay, I start putting up boundaries and communicating that I would like something back. And then they don't give anything back. And they try to slide in and take it on the sly. And that's when I just start isolating even further because I'm like, what people really think that they're victims and that that justifies them victimizing and exploiting other people. See, it's because I'm poor that I need to take care of this. Okay. If I take from poor people, right? This is mentalities going on that your bad situation is not as bad as theirs. And I just become even more reclusive because of this. Okay. Side note that I left out earlier, I think is very important. I of course try to make better friends during this time. I realize like, Something's got to change with the people I'm connecting to. And I did meet, I'm thinking of one person in particular who seemed like they were a very solid person. We shared a lot of beliefs. Um, we're on the same page about a lot of stuff. But I came to realize that they actually were being very giving and generous to me. And they were really showing up for me because they wanted... A romantic relationship with me so i started asking myself like mm, if this person wasn't trying to advance the friendship into something more would they be so into me would they like me as much would they give me as much would they be so generous i kind of felt like the answer was no they wouldn't you know and so i didn't end the friendship i just continued with the friendship aware that this person had some hidden hidden motivations 
and I tried to address it and work with it, but I think that once they realized that I really, really wasn't going to advance the friendship into anything more than that, uh, then they were trying to, um, you know, come up with opportunities to help me financially where I would in turn help them back financially. And then all of a sudden I noticed conversations with this person where they were saying, but I helped you. And I was like kind of taken aback because I'm like, what? what we, you helped me, okay? Yeah, you did help me, but I paid you for that help, did I not? So I think we helped each other. And it was kind of a, a weird observation that I made again that I'm trying to make new friends, but yet again, I'm running into this experience where I'm realizing that people's reasons for being friends with me are self-motivated, you know, or less than what I had hoped or idealized. And I ended up having to kind of back away from that. So about 2019 to 2020, uh, Karen's still in Aries at this time. And uh, the focus of this 11th house transit then shifts into, as it's getting closer to my Chiron and Aries where my Juno is as well, uh, which is ideal life partner, Aries, right? It's moving towards more of a focus on pain points I've had with soulmates. So notice there's kind of this sandwiching going on. When I started telling you about this time frame, we talked about soulmates with my marriage, my failed marriage, <laughs> okay? And then in the middle of it, sandwich there is a lot about friend groups and, you know, social media and all of that. And then now we're closing this out where it gets back into this, who have I idealized as a life partner apart from the past, the ex, okay? And it's about this time I start running into um, a couple Aries men. The first one that I ran into, a very tempting man, let me say, very tempting, was practically everything I had asked for. Everything that I could, on, if I were to make a list, everything, except he's married and he's not going to leave her. So uh, this, this is something that uh, at this point, I'm not going to be deceived. I'm not going to be fooled. Like, wow, you know, this is everything that I have asked for, but that's a big but that I can't, I can't go along with. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to be your side chick. I'm not going to do it. So, uh, and I mean, I could see through it all, you know, I could, I could see the, the, <laughs> the, how dreamy and idealistic the connection could be. And I could also see how dismal it could be as well um and how much damage it would do to myself and so many other people so i just decided i'm not going to engage in this relationship and side note at this point my online business starts slowing down as we're coming into 2020 and i start feeling the effects of algorithms and being blacklisted and all of that so uh, now, you know, this whole concept that I had back in 2017 when I launched the channel of, you know, I'm going to only do social media if it profits me. Well, it's starting, it's coming into a phase where it's not really profiting me anymore. It's not really paying my bills. And it's really not a bright idea anymore because everybody and their mama at this rate is getting on social media trying to do online businesses with COVID 2020, right? So the whole online business realm radically shifts turning my ideas completely upside down okay so i don't want to say that i'm still working through that and unfortunately with chiron moving now into my 12th house as i speak it's now in my 12th house um i really don't i I'm, I'm concerned about that okay like I'm still figuring out how to redefine my healing work online. I, I don't, it's still like up in the air. I, I don't have it figured out, but probably Chiron going through my 12th house is going to force me to work through that. But let me say 2021 to present, right? Um, this issue of who I've idealized, at least in my own mind, as who would be this ideal soulmate, life partner, it became a lot more magnified as I met yet another Aries. This time, 
uh, I would say this, this person, very not perfect, <laughs> but had a lot of um, attributes in his personality that I, I really like, and it, it dredged up a lot of issues about the man that I thought I was going to marry, that I didn't marry, who was an Aries. Um, and oddly, he was about the same age. It's like, there was an age difference, okay? So, <laughs> a tremendous, this is another reason why it's very not perfect, okay? And I found myself in this weird dynamic where it was almost like I was picking up where I left off with the original Aries that broke my heart that I thought I was going to make a life with that I didn't. And um, so it's almost like, you know, where spirit maybe had planned or intended for me to work with this person from my past on an issue, but their free will did not align. Spirit honored that, and it's almost like brought this other person in uh, and started working through some of those things together where I kind of had to look at who is this person through the lens of me being older, wiser, more experienced? Like, am I still attracted to that? Well, yeah, why? Why? Because it wasn't doing anything for me. It really wasn't. And I'm probably going to talk a lot more about this in detail when I get out of my Chiron return, which is going to be a bit, right? Because I'm in the thick of it right now. Um, very painful, but I will say thus far, what I've realized is... Um, Okay, yeah, I really am attracted to Aries. Um, it never ends well for me because with a Juno in Aries and a Chiron conjunct, there's always some wounding that happens with them where they give me attention and then they leave me feeling trivialized. And it does not matter what age, stage, or life anyone is involved. It always comes out the wash this way. And I'm like, why the heck? This is awful that you're attracted to this type of energy that always leaves you feeling trivialized. And so I started doing a lot of soul searching as to why, why am I attracted to this? And I realized there is some mirroring going on. Um, Aries, they like to get attention. And at some level, yes, I, I like the attention as well. But I had to start realizing that they're desire for attention is not the same as mine like for them it's kind of this energy of look mom no hands while you're riding a bike right it's kind of like showing off making it about the ego the self you know um that's their re that's just their energy like they have a very childlike innocent playful they're just having fun you know <laughs> that's that's their energy but for me it goes much deeper it goes into wanting to be prioritized wanting to feel important and that's not their reason for giving or getting attention at all it's like we want the same thing but for different reasons and that's why like i always end up feeling like i'm being toyed with by them because it, it is it's just like they're playing around with shit and i don't like being played around with i don't like it and that's a soul wound coming from my childhood gen x right we're all chiron and aries generation and we grew up with a feeling that we weren't important, that we weren't being prioritized. So I realized, okay, this is a something I had to work out in my spirit that I've mistaken the attention that they've given me for me being important or priority. And that's really what I'm seeking. I'm thinking, right, that bright, shiny object, ooh, they're giving me attention, doesn't mean what I think it means at all or what I feel like. It's, it's hitting something in me that is a void, that is lacking, this feeling that I had, but that's not really what they're intending. That's me maybe projecting a need onto them. So yeah, I just started realizing after doing a lot of soul searching of why am I attracted to something that is just like leaving me feeling pained at the end of the day. Um, okay, th this is, you know, I I've got to look at intentions, motivations, and getting this need met in a different way maybe. And as for the whole social media thing, I mean, right now, oh my, I, I don't know what I'm going to do because, you know, Saturn is not going into this 11th house, uh, which is probably going to make it very hard for me to make any money off of social media, astrology, 
Um, it's definitely been hard to have a career, an online business, or just any kind of career with Saturn in the 10th house, which again, like I said, I'll talk about in another video, probably I'll put out in the next two weeks. Make sure you are subscribed and have activated the bell for notifications if you want to make sure you're in the loop and you're notified for that. But I'll say as of right now, um, I just, I guess I had all these dreams over the last 10 years that social media would be something it has not become right i think a lot of us when we all started on social media uh, back you know when facebook launched in i guess 2008 2009 when i first got on it and you know they had myspace and stuff like that we didn't really know what social media was going to be and a lot of us have maybe had some wishful thinking that we were going to make some really good friends or that uh, we were going to be able to kind of spread messages of truth and freedom to people uh, with, you know, maybe political activism or whatever. And we were going to be able to connect with like-minded people. I mean, that has somewhat happened, but not to the extent that I think many of us, myself included, especially have idealized, especially with Neptune transiting the 11th house this entire time. Um, and as of right now, Neptune's still in that 11th house where I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. How, I don't, I, I think it's shot at this point. I don't know how to make a living off of the internet, online businesses anymore. I don't know. I don't even know if it's going to, I feel like the whole system is rigged with algorithms. Yeah, I become disillusioned, very Neptunian. Started out wishful, dreamy, idealistic, pie in the sky thinking it's ended up very disillusioned. And so... At this point, my online work, my online business has become more of a service to humanity that I have given freely, sacrificially. Oh, yeah. And I don't know how, I don't know how to get out of this. But it is what it is. And uh, in summary, I would say, you know, if you're going through Chiron in the 11th house transit, you are going to see the dark side of humanity. You're going to see what motivates people to align with certain people and not. It's not pretty, but in the final analysis, you become a lot more conscious of who you're giving your energy to and why. And forming attachments that are, are more based and healing and grounded then had you not gone through that transit and yeah it comes through some painful revelations about people and about yourself but hopefully this point forward I make better connections with people for better reasons than I certainly had coming into it hope this helps be blessed